Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know, however, is it is bloody hot in my kitchen, which is why the fan is on. And I decided that while I am impatiently waiting for jaw breaker and mini breaker palettes to arrive, I would attempt doing a pride look using all of Jeffree Star's previous palettes. So, Beauty Killer, Androgyny, Blood Sugar, Thirsty, Alien, I need bigger hands, and Blue Blood. Can you see me over these? Can you? So, which shades did I use from which palettes? You are just going to have to watch to find out. So, grab yourself a drink, grab yourself a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Uh, fan is on because it is ridiculously hot and if I don't have the fan on, my makeup will not stay on regardless of Having used my antiperspirant primer, I'm still going to need the addition of Le Fan. So, I decided while I'm waiting rather impatiently, I should say, for my um, Jeffree Star Jaw Breaker and Mini Breaker palettes to arrive, because I ordered mine from Beautylish, because three instalments, you know, we're not all multimillionaires, Jeremy, you know? Jeff Jeremy? Jeffrey. Who the hell is Jeremy? He's getting to me already, folks. It's going to be a good film. Yeah, it's, we're not all multi-millionaires, okay? You had your concealers and your glosses. And now you've got two palettes and yet again, crap ton of liquid lipsticks. Do you know why so many of the liquid lipsticks this time round are so similar to previous ones? I'll stick a picture there if I remember. It's because you should have stuck to what you did with your first two releases. Your white caps and your yellow caps. You did five colours. That was affordable. Every single one after that has been eight colours. That's why you run out of colours. Stop it. It's also why everybody's broke. <sighs> I'm hot and tetchy, can you tell? Anyway, as I was saying, while I'm waiting rather impatiently, uh, for those two palettes to arrive. I wondered whether, because obviously I've got all of these other palettes, hang on. See, I have got all of them. So I wondered, taking one colour from each palette, Could I do a pride look with it? So, uh, that's, that's what I'm going to attempt to do today. I genuinely have no idea how well this will work out. I've got a rough idea which shades I want to use. And I'm probably going to add, I'm going to use red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple for the indigo and then I'm going to probably add a pink in because then I can do four colours on each eye. That's my plan. How well it happens? But I thought a pride inspired look with Jeffrey's uh, palettes might be a good thing to do in Pride Month. So, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed with the antiperspirant primer but even that is struggling in the heat today and all I've got uh, on my eyes is Max Soft Ochre Paint Pot which 
is blended out. Now, uh, I'm a teaching channel, so I go slowly enough for absolute beginners to keep up with me. I also have chronic pain, as you can see from the I only got two hours of sleep last night because it was hot and my chronic pain does not like heat or cold or wet or damp or anything, really. If we get dull weather, where it's not too hot, not too cold, not too damp, not too dry, then I can have a reasonably good day. This is Britain. We don't get days like that often. Right. Um, I have deep set eyes. They're sometimes called double eyelids. And I do get similar problems that people with hooded lids get. And a lot of people with double eyelids think they have hooded lids. So I just want to explain the difference for you. When I look straight ahead with my eyes open and brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid, so I don't have hooded lids. If your static lid completely covers part or all of your mobile lid right down to the lash line, then you have either a half or a full hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. With double lids, if I cover my mobile lid this side and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that tucks back in away. And if I cover the static lid and close my eye, you can see again I've got lid that's going to rub against this lid. So I have exactly the same problems that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of shimmers onto the upper lid. Um, when I'm cutting my crease, I can't just follow my eyeball. I have to cut up onto the upper lid. And even when I use glitter glues, uh, glitter will not stay through the crease. I always get bald patches. Lovely. But all of my tutorials are therefore hooded lid friendly. Now, if you don't have a mobile lid, get a brush, something like this, and just sketch a line where you need your crease to fall. So you're creating a mobile lid on your static lid. Obviously it's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes than me and you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to start off, um, listed in my description box below, there's a which brushes do I like. Better. Just taking my breath away. Um, and these are the ones, this is one of the ones from the uh, AliExpress set. And this is eye crease brush number eight. So, obviously, starting with red, we're going to go into blood sugar. And yes, I've kept the case because it reminds me of an old VHS case, and I'm that old. Okay, so obviously, I'm going to go into Rick. Now, if I go too slowly for you, please just speed me up. Don't mind that I'm going too slowly for you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go into Prick, which is the brightest red he's got in this palette. And I'm going to start off on this side. And because I've not set the lid, I'm just tapping the pigment on. in an absolutely straight line, as you can see. I think I might need to add a darker red to that to get the effect that I want. So I'm going to add some cherry soda on top. Yay, there we go. That's the sort of colour I was looking for. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet on my lids, so I'm sort of just not worrying about those too much at the moment. Okay, one palette down. I might speed up these bits where I'm changing palettes just so that it's not such a long film. And then again, I might forget. 
So I'm just going to clean as much of this red off of the brush as I can on a washcloth. But blood sugar is a bugger for staining. I really should have done the red last, probably. Never mind. Right. Androgyny. Which is the pink crocodile skin effect. And I'm going to go into Charm, which is the orange there. So I'm going to pack my brush. And bung some charm on. Oh, this is nice. I like this. It is strange just doing one shade from a palette and then putting them all back down again. I'll put them back in their boxes afterwards, I think. Otherwise, I am going to be here all day. Right. Thirsty palette, which is the one with the spot lamination on it. For those of you who work in print, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. That's what creates these little drops of what are meant to be condensation on the outside of the uh, lollipop and I'm going to go into quench which at the moment is the brightest of his yellows probably could have done that red a little bit wider couldn't I Never mind. I shall know for the other eye. It's fine. That yellow is lovely. It's weird. Quint, uh, first is probably my least used of his palettes. I just... I think if there had been a darker brown in the palette so that I could darken looks up easier. I think I'd use it more. But they're all very sort of mid-toned and pastel brown, you know, pastel colours and I just... Right, time for Alien with its eyeballs. And I'm going to go, even though it is actually a shimmer, I'm going to go into Alien because it's the lovely bright green. So I'm expecting fallout now from a shimmer because I've not tapped this off at all. Oh, hello green. <laughs> As I said, fallout. Not surprised. That's lovely. I might try tapping a little bit of flying saucer over the top. just to maybe take some of the shine off of it a little bit so it's not so obviously a shimmer alongside the mats yeah I'm actually really liking this okie dokie I'm for Blooper. And I'm going to use two from here because obviously you've got the blue and then the indigo, which is the sort of denim jean coloured blue. So I'm going to start off by going into the uh, eponymously named Blue Blood. Because of these deep creases where my eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was like four or four, five years old, I do have to stretch the lid out there unfortunately. Don't do that unless you absolutely have to. 
or you will end up with ridiculously deep creases like I have got and I can promise you you don't want that this is such a pretty blow and then I'm going to go into a blue Monday which as you can see is more of a a denim-y, bluey, purpley colour which obviously is the indigo shade on the, on the rainbow just pack that on and build it up a little bit because obviously the base is not set because I wanted these colours to really punch This is so much fun. I should have done more of these this month, really. But I had so many collabs that um, just trying to get through everything this month. Uh, I think I said in one of my previous videos I might have to sneak an extra film on so that some weeks you get four films just to catch up. And finally, his first palette. Beauty Killer, which of course is named after the album, and that's the gorgeous baby pink palette. And I'm going to use Violence and then Star Power on the end. I know technically pink isn't part of the rainbow, but as I said earlier, I wanted to um, have four colours on each eye. So I'm doing the rainbow and then if I'd done it in a circle technically between purple and red you'd probably get a pink ish maybe. But you're doing my world. Oh itchy nose. This is so much fun. And as you can see, I'm not really blending much between the colours because I want them to stand out on their own. So this is a... Oh, bloody hay fever. This is a uh, very much an editorial or an architectural look. Because I, I do enjoy doing these. Um, Anya, uh, Pink Sweets, I think she's on YouTube. Um, a lot of her looks are done in the sort of architectural or editorial manner where she doesn't do a huge amount of blending and it really makes the colours pop and I think for this by not blending them together too much it just it really adds to the emphasis of the individual colours probably didn't hear a word of what I just whispered. What I said to myself was, I like that. It's so pretty. Oh Lord, now I've got to try and decide what colour to do on my lids, haven't I? Oh, I might go into the Alien palette because I haven't. I've used it a lot off screen, but I've not done much on screen with it. But first, I need to show you how to do an easy cut crease. Now, I've shown these before, but if you're new to my channel, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to zoom you out a little bit. I'm going to show you a foolproof way of doing a cut crease that will work regardless of your eye shape. Just 
just going to tidy that bit up because that will fidget me otherwise when I'm editing. Now, I bought these brushes. These are um, they're designed for nail art. So if you search, I got mine on eBay. I got a set of about six of them for about a fiver, and I just typed in uh, nail art acrylic brush, and this is what comes up. And I have one that I use to apply the. Um, oh. Good Lord. Concealer, that's the word I'm looking for. And then I have one that I use to apply the colour. Okay. And what I like about these is that they come down so super, super thin, which is exactly what you want. So, I'm going to grab my Tarte Shape Tape in 8B Porcelain Beige. And then I'm going to just load this brush up like so and then I'm just gonna let me just grab a little mirror so I can look down because obviously this is the eye that I see with so I can't actually close it so I'm just gonna go And I'm going to open my eyes, relax my brows, and blink a couple of times. And that shows you exactly how far up you need to cut your crease. And then what I do is I completely clean off any concealer that's still on the brush. Okay. And I very lightly press it all over that lid where I've just put the concealer. And what this does is it helps to pick up any excess concealer that could end up mixing with the shadow you're about to apply. See how much it's taken off? You can do this with your finger as well, but with nails like mine, that's not the best idea in the world. Okay. Now, if when you do this you're finding it's not transferring onto the upper lid for you, try using a little bit more or a little bit less concealer until you find out the right amount that you need for your lid to make it transfer up. Okay. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to load the brush up. This time I can actually close my eye to show you. Just whack it all across the socket, you're, you're, tr you're trying to get it to the top of the socket really, and then about halfway down, open your eye, relax your brows, blink a few times, and then you can see where you need to take your concealer to. Ooh, I got a little bit too much today. 
In fact, it's fair to say I got a little lot too much today. <laughs> And that is the easy way to cut your crease, sweetie pie. Yeah, I love getting shaped up in my eyeball, that's just great. Don't overload your brush too much, folks. Learn from my mistakes. I always keep these little plastic sheath things to protect the bristles so that when it's in the pot with all my other brushes it doesn't get knocked about too much. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to go into thirsty. because he tried a different formula for the shimmers in this. Now this one and this one are great. The rest of them, not so much. So I think I'm gonna do gold shimmer this, yeah, gold shimmer this side and a silver shimmer on that side. So I'm gonna go into lick silicon brush here. These are really good when you get um, colours that apply best with your finger and you don't want to use your finger. Silicon brushes are great for applying them. Yeah, the formula of these shimmers are bizarre. I really hope he never does this again. Because as I said, there's only this one, which is Lick and Divine, that are any good. The other three are just... they perform awfully. Now yes, I'm getting fallout with this because I'm packing it on quite thickly but I always do my base after I've done my eyes anyway so it's really not an issue have you got any Jeffrey palettes? which ones have you got? and which are your favourites? Have you ordered Jawbreaker? Or did it not appeal to you? I know Jeffrey's not everybody's cup of tea, but I mean I've followed him since his music days. And you know, say what you will about the man, he does make a good formula. Well, apart from those other three that I mentioned earlier. Right, clean the silicon brush off, and now I'm going to go into the silver, which is divine, darling. Okay. 
before you ask, no, I don't know if it was named after the drag queen. I don't think it was. I'm going to stretch the lid out again because of those deep creases. Otherwise I have the issue that the, um, the shimmer sort of sits in the crease and then as I move my eyes during the day I get a shower of it coming down and end up with the, either with eyeshadow in my eyes or multicoloured freckles. Either of which, not the look I'm going for. If you don't have a silicone brush, the sponge tip applicators that we all hate and throw away, they're actually really good for applying shimmers or um, loose pigments. like that. Right, I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to do uh, foundation and face products etc. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. So uh, uh, you're going to see me right now. I've got a little bit of a wait until I see you again. So here we go. <laughs> I decided to go for blue brows today to tie both so I was I was contemplating getting um, two different colored brows but then I changed my mind so I am gonna go in with alien again grab my flat top brush and because I've gone so bright on the top, I think I'm going to go quite dark under here to completely contrast. So I'm going to go into Ghost OG on this flat top brush. And just run that really tight along the bottom lash line. And obviously the same on this side. Yes, I'm flinching. It's the eye that I'm blinding. I have no peripheral vision and uh, I'm relying on a viewfinder that's far too far away for comfort. Okay. And then this is the brush that was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat top but nice and chunky so it's great for getting up under your lashes. And I'm going to go into tall grey and just use that to buff the lower lash line out. Now this was a really, really cheap lip brush that I got from eBay yonks and yonks and yonks ago. I'm going to go in with the Supreme Frost Wet Dream, uh, which looks a little bit like that, and it's going to put glitter all over me. It's a pride look, so glitter feels appropriate. Plus, I kind of like this anyway. I usually rock it at least once a week. Usually, when I'm doing the food shopping, 
which gets me some very odd looks, but you know. Come see, come sir, Rodney. Come see, come sir. Now, for my eye shape, I found that bringing it along under the tear duct and just blending it in with the colour that I've run under my eye is actually the most flattering shape for me. But obviously, you do what works best for your particular eye shape. Right. I'm going to pause you one last time while I put this highlight over the rest of my face, choose a lipstick and do something with my hair and bung some mascara on and I'll be back with the finished look. I'm back. I decided to go for a super bright lipstick. I went for the Colourpop Lippy Sticks in shade Tickler because it just, it felt right with this eye look, what can I say? Um, the mascara that I used was the Essence Lash, Lash Princess with the green lid because I didn't want to hide the beautiful eye look by having my lashes too thick and voluminous and that's more of a natural looking finish. So there you go. That is my pride look using Jeffrey's first six palettes. Yeah, six palettes. What do you think? Let me know in the uh, comments box below how you think I did. Right, as ever, the YouTube are still deleting people, so please double check you're still subscribed. Uh, even if I'm still appearing in your news feed, you may still have been unsubscribed from me. I don't know what YouTube are up to at the moment, but they are definitely not making life easy for us smaller creators, that is for sure. Right. Now, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.